welcome to the Activated Story Theater's 141st podcast. This episode, we bring you The Precious Cow, a story from Africa. Hi, I'm Dennis. And I'm Kimberly. And together we are the Activated Actors! We are coming to you from Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Which I don't think is on a hill. I haven't seen the hill. I don't know. <laughs> are you looking for the hill? Because I, I, I don't see I'm, one either. I, I don't see the hill and I don't see the chapel. <laughs> I've seen chapels, but I have not seen the hill. I don't see a chapel on a hill, though. All right. Well, I'm not quite sure how they have the name then. But that's where we are right now. We've been doing a lot of touring since we last talked to you. We were in Arkansas. We came uh, through Hot Springs and Virginia and West Virginia. Actually, we went to West Virginia first, then Virginia, and then we came to North Carolina. And now we're heading north. We've got some shows coming up in Pennsylvania and Massachusetts. We'll tell you about those after the story today. But first of all, we want to tell you a little bit about what we've been doing. We've been doing some zipping, and we'll tell you about that in just a second. Not just zipping from show to show, but zipping on a cable above the ground. That's right. We'll tell you about that in just a second. But first of all, we want to let you know about some podcast listeners that we got to meet in person. They are the Singleton family. Yes, they came to our show. They came to both of our shows in High Point. Which, by the way, is not very high either, but uh, it's, it's kind of flat. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, they came to both of our shows. At but the... it was the high point of our tour. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they came to both of our shows in High Point, morning show and evening show. Right. And uh, it, it's great to meet you guys. It's always great to meet our podcast listeners. It, it sure is. It makes us realize how much worth the effort it all is to do these things. Yes, yes. Had a great time with them and really enjoyed um, meeting them. So um, here's a little word from the Singleton family. Hi, it's the Singletons. And we like to activate the storytellers. Activators. And I'm Demetrius, the dad. I'm with your mom. I'm KK. I'm almost 11. And hi, me. And three. All right. My favorite show is the Magic Book Professor Spooky. My favorite show is the... It's a, the book of magic because I like how funny it is. My favorite is Tops and Bottoms because I love how clever the fox is. What's your favorite? I like magic Okay. <laughs> we have been listening to this podcast for two years now. It is great. We enjoyed the live performances and the podcast. It's great on long road trips. Thank you guys so much for the entertainment over the years. And we really love how you got all of the kids involved at this afternoon's performance. Um, that huge story book is awesome, and we look forward to seeing you again next time you're in or close to North Carolina. And again, thank you so much for coming to the show. We are looking forward to meeting you and more of our podcast listeners in the future. Um, so a little bit about zipping, and then we're going to tell you the story, The Precious Cow. Well, zipping, you harness yourself to a cable anywhere from, I don't know, 25 feet to 200 feet off the ground, depending on I think more than 25 go. feet. But. More than 25 <laughs> feet. And you zip for uh, up to, well, we've, we've done it to up to half a mile or so. Right, and most recently we just went to one in Hot Springs, Arkansas, which was very beautiful. Lovely people running the place. Um, it's run by a family, and it takes place over their property, and you're, they've got you um, zipping from, um, kind of like from mountain to mountain, hill to hill, over a valley. It's very mm. gorgeous. I really, really enjoyed that one. And then we went to one in North Carolina. Yes. Which was really interesting because they have all kinds of different things there. It's not just a zip line. They have uh, they have a haunted house at Halloween. Mm -hmm. They have a corn maze in the fall. Uh, you can you can do gemstones. I'm looking for right. gemstones, mining for gemstones. They have an educational program that teaches about bees and you get to like be in a show about how the bees be work. Be in a show. I see what you yeah, did there. See what I did there? You got onto that. Yeah. Um, so you can see how like how a, a, a bee works and then you get to actually go see the bees and see them really doing what they do. Um, so they had, we had a lot of fun with that one too. And also while we've been in North Carolina, we hiked up Pilot Mountain. Almost to the top. Almost Next time to the we're going to do the top. We really didn't set out to go to the top, so we kind of turned around after we got to see a great view, and then we turned around and came back down. But a lot of fun we have been having. Yes. 
All right. Well, that was my Yoda speak. <laughs> Your Yoda speak. <laughs> A lot of fun we have been having, yes. Okay, well, let's go to uh, somewhere in Africa. We don't know exactly th what country this uh, story came from, but somewhere in Africa for a story called The Precious Cow. Long, long ago, somewhere in Africa, there lived a father with three sons and a cow. The cow was not related to them, but it was the father's favorite cow in the whole world. He even called it... My precious cow. One day, he said to his oldest son... Son, uh, take my precious cow out to the pasture and uh, let him graze in the grass and drink from the stream. Yes, father. So he took the cow out to the pasture and let it eat plenty of grass and drink plenty of water from the stream. And then they both lay down and took a nap. But when they got back home, the father said to the cow, so then, uh, did you get plenty to eat and drink? And the cow replied, Heavens no! That lazy son of yours wouldn't let me eat or drink. All he did was nap the whole time. This made the father quite angry. <sighs> so he said to the son, Why didn't you give my precious cow grass and water as I told you to? But I did. Then why did the cow say you didn't? That cow talks to you? Yes, and I listen. Now, uh, if you can't take care of my precious cow better than that, then I don't want you living under my roof. Be off with you. But, Dad, off, I say. So sadly, the oldest son left the house and went out on his own. He wandered into the village, where he was apprenticed to a tailor and learned to make clothes. But that's not what's important right now. Um, what's important is that the father had only two sons left at home. So he said to his middle son, Look, son, uh, I need you to take my precious cow into the pasture and let him eat grass and drink water from the stream and swat away the flies from him. Uh, can you handle that? Sure thing, Pa. And so the second son led the cow out to the pasture and let him eat grass and drink water. And he swatted the flies away from the cow. Later, after they had come back home, the father asked the cow. So I guess you're nice and full now, huh? No way. That lazy, good-for-nothing son of yours is just as bad as the other one. He wouldn't let me eat or drink. Plus, he beat me. Well, the father was very angry at this, and he called the second son to him and said, What is the meaning of this? You have abused and neglected my precious cow, just as your brother did. What? Who told you that? The cow. I see, and you didn't stop to think that maybe that was just bull? Enough. I do not want you living under my roof if you are going to neglect and abuse my precious cow. You're out of here. But, but, go! So sadly, the second brother also went away. He went into the village and was apprenticed to a cobbler who taught him how to make shoes. Uh oh, but that's not important right now. What's important is that the father had left only one son and his precious cow. Now, in many folk tales, things happen in threes. You know, three little pigs, three billy goats gruff, three bears, and so on. And so quite often, something happens the same way twice. And then the third time is different. The glass slipper doesn't fit the two stepsisters, but it does fit Cinderella. The big bad wolf blows down two houses, but not the third. And so on. I wish I could say the same was the case here, but I'm afraid the father would have had to raise another dozen sons to learn his lesson. And by then, the cow would have died anyway, which makes you wonder. Uh, 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 oh, um. Right, I, I, I guess we should stick to the story. Well, the next day... Son? Who, me? 
I don't see any other sun left here, do you? Look, I need you to take my precious cow out to pasture and let it eat grass and drink water from the stream. And while you're at it, brush away its flies and wash it. Uh, can you handle that? Of course, Papa. You won't let me down the way your brothers did? Of course not. You may depend on me. Good. So the youngest son took the cow to the pasture where it ate plenty of grass and to the stream where it drank plenty of water. And he brushed away the flies from the cow and washed it in the stream. Except that since there were no photos of it on Facebook or Instagram, it didn't really happen. So when they got back home, the father asked the cow. So uh, now this time you must surely be nice and full, right? Are you kidding? That lazy, good-for-nothing, obnoxious kid is even worse than his two brothers were. He wouldn't let me eat any of the crunchy, sweet grass from the pasture or drink any of the cool, refreshing water from the stream. Not only that, he beat me and he forced me to listen to him sing John Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt. Well, the father was obviously furious. Ah. And he ordered his last son out of the house, along with the other two. But, but Dad, can, can't you see that animal has you cowed? Go! So, sadly, the third son also went into the village, where he apprenticed to a doctor and learned to make medicines. But, Oh, but that's not important right now. What's important is that the father was left all alone with his precious cow. Well, I guess if I want something done, I'll have to do it myself. Come along, my precious cow. Let's go to the pasture. So they went into the pasture where the cow ate lots of grass and drank lots of water and the father brushed away its flies and washed it in the stream. But... When they got back home, the cow said, Hey, what's the big idea? You're just as bad as your lousy sons. You said you were going to feed me and water me and fly me and wash me and you didn't keep your word. Yes, I did. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. No, you didn't. Wait, wait. Am I to understand that you, you lied to me about my sons? Well, once or twice, or was it thrice? Why? Why would you do such a thing? Why would I lie? Are you kidding me? I'm bored to death. You just try being a cow all day. You'll see. Hey, would you believe I'm really a grasshopper in disguise? Hey, hey, once I jumped over the moon, <laughs> you know, while that cat was playing his fiddle. I am not very happy with you at all right now. Ah, take it easy. I have mad cow disease or something. Well, the father was absolutely furious with that cow. In fact, he had hamburgers for months after that. But he ate it all alone, because he didn't know where his sons were or how to find them. The years passed, and he grew very ill. Oh, I'd better go into the village and see if I can find a doctor. <laughs> so he walked and he walked, and he grew weaker and weaker. Finally, when he reached the village, he collapsed in the street. A crowd gathered around him. Among them, as it happened, were his three sons. Father! Father! Dad! He looks cold. I'll get a new coat that I made in my shop. And his shoes are all worn out. I'll get some that I made in my shop. He looks ill. Let's take him into my doctor's office where I can give him some medicine. And so the family was all together again. And the father had learned the hard way to take the word of his sons over the word of a bored cow. And that's the story of The Precious Cow from somewhere in Africa. 
And that'll teach you to never <laughs> listen to a cow. Never. If a cow talks to you, you better take it with a grain of salt. <laughs> All right. Well, that was a kind of fun story. I think I, I've never heard that one before. I, I hadn't either until just recently. And where did you find that one? I don't remember. I was just... Oh, I found it in the 398 section at the library. Ah, of course you did. The 398 section. That's where they hide all the folk tales. Yes, the, the really good stories. They do. All right. Well, like I said, we do have some shows coming up. So if you are in Pennsylvania... There is one chance to see us at the Shippensburg Library. We will be there July 29th at 6.30. So that's an evening show. Um, and if you know anybody else in Pennsylvania, please let them know about our show. Uh, after that, we are going to Massachusetts. We're going to do some summer camps, but we do have a couple of shows that are open to the public. One is going to be at the Manchester by the Sea Library. Is that anywhere near the sea? Mm, you know what? You're going to have to come and find out. Oh, okay. That is going to be at 1030 on Friday, August 8th. And then we're also at the Medway Library. And that show is going to be on August 13th at 3 o'clock. And that will be wrapping up our summer reading program. Wow, the summer is almost over already for yes. us. Yes, and then we're going to go back to school and we're going to do some back to school programs. And yes. we're going to have some fun doing that. But those are all going to be just at schools and I can't really invite the public to those shows. So, sorry about that. But hopefully we'll be coming to your school. Um, you can always arrange for us to come to your school. We do travel all over the United States. So if you want us to come to your school, have your principal or your PTA call us at 800-429-6576 or you can always use that line because we want to hear what stories you like and what stories you'd like for us to do in the future. Yes, absolutely. So if you find a story in the 398 section of your library and you think it would be good to listen to, to have us podcast it, give us a call. Let us know what story you're interested in. Yes, and so we hope to see you at a show. Until then, remember, you should be skeptical if a cow tells you that its name is Mulan. Stay activated. Activated Story Theater is committed to bringing fun educational shows to schools and libraries nationwide. On stage, we use physical comedy, American Sign Language, imaginative props, and a giant oversized book to bring multicultural folk tales to life. For booking information, check out our website, activatedstorytheater.com, where you can also find out when the activated actors will be performing near you. Read a story or order one of our audio CDs. You can subscribe to this podcast on iTunes or listen on Stitcher. We look forward to your comments and folktale suggestions. Stay activated. Until next time. Thank you.